Slope. Slope. M is the slope. So if you don't know that, read the question. Should say slope is, or M is the slope, right? Doesn't it say M equals? Which one are you doing? The example or are you doing the problems? Practice. So read the problem. It says right in there the slope is, what does it say? M is the slope. See it? Yep. Um, here. You don't have the page. Number three on the page. Two eighteen. Well, actually, I'm sorry. This is not two. The example was two eighteen. Practice problems. It's you just keep keep going until you see like where it says practice. But I don't know what page that is exactly, but. You keep scrolling. It's probably two or three pages after 218. So somewhere around 222 ish, maybe, maybe after that. Yeah, well, you won't need calculators for those. You'll need calculators for these. But you shouldn't need a calculator for the first three. You're just you're not doing any math. You're just plugging in numbers. Well, there's no math in the you just leave it. Yeah. Did they do anything else? That's the answer. Did they do any answer? Take that back. Um, I'll show that part. Then. Let me show that. Because you're right. You actually are right. They did do that. They don't show it to you in that problem. So I'll walk through. Wait. Yes. Uh, well, this is net subtract negative four. So the subtraction sign is part of the equation, but then you still have to include the negative with the four because that's what the x one is negative four. Okay. There you go. So this is again, it's y subtract y one. We have y equals y subtract y one. Then equals. Look at what they have right there. All right, so there's one more piece that I, I do have to show you that they didn't they didn't complete for you in the book. So uh, let's we'll go to the book. Oh, I gotta start the book. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna do the one from the book page and I'll just write it up here. What is it? Negative two comma seven, negative three halves. Hopefully it's saved. All right, so here you go, everybody back up here. Take two minutes and then you can keep moving forward. There's one piece I didn't show you. There is more to it than just plugging in the number. So uh, let me zoom in. I'm not doing this problem, so you can check your, your problem in a second. So not doing that one. I'm doing the one that's in the book, which I think is negative two comma seven. That's the point. And the slope is negative three halves. All right, so I believe that's the example problem from the book. So if you want to go to the example, it's page 218. So the formula is y subtract y1 equals the slope times x subtract x1. You have got to memorize that. There's no way around it. If they ask for point and slope form, and again, I don't know that they will. They technically shouldn't because they're not supposed to force you to do things in one way. But if they consider this a separate standard, I guess they can force you to do it this way. So we are just plugging numbers in first. That's it. There is one math step that they don't show you that I'll show you. So this is my x1, y1. So here's y1, there's x1. I'm just plugging those in. Um, I'll write it small out to the side. If you can't see it, then I'll tell you what it says. 
So let's, so the Y is still just Y. This Y is just Y. Subtract Y1 is seven. All right, seven there, there's no math I can do with that. So that's just gonna stay like that. The slope is, I'll just write that in black, that's fine. Negative three halves. And then that is times X subtract. And then X one is make sure you include the negative. By you when it's subtracting a negative number, you want to not write the negative sign because you think the subtraction sign takes care of that. The subtraction is part of the formula. Then you write whatever the number is. If it's negative, you write a negative number there. Same thing here. This was negative, you would have written a negative number there. So it would have been subtract a negative. So now there is some math I can do. I can do the distributive property right here. And ignore that. So the distributive property says I can take this number outside the parentheses and multiply it times those two numbers inside the parentheses. I can't combine X and negative two. That's a variable. That's a number. No idea what X is. So how could I possibly combine that with a number? If X is a million, then I would obviously get a different answer than if X was one. Can't combine. Them. Just leave them like that. And I multiply both of them times negative three halves. Y subtract seven doesn't change. Nothing I can do on that side for the same reason. I don't know what Y is. How can I combine it with seven? So negative three times X, I'm sorry, negative three halves is just negative three halves X. You multiply times a variable, you basically just take the multiplication symbol out, just put negative three halves X. Now here's the slightly trickier part. This is, uh -huh. You're not going to be able to fix this with a calculator. So there's two ways to do this. Um, when you subtract a negative, that actually changes the plus. Does anybody remember keep change flip way back in the day? This is that situation. You keep the X. You change the negative to a positive. And you flip the sign also to positive. So X subtract negative two becomes X plus two. So now I'm actually multiplying a negative times a positive, which will still be negative. So it's going to be a subtraction sign. Negative three halves times two gives me negative three. You have a calculator. If you want to practice real quick, try putting that in and make sure you get negative two. I'm sorry, negative three. Well, we're not, yeah, we don't do any math with this. The only thing you're doing right now, you're trying to do this in a calculator. I want you to just make sure you get negative three. So you hit the, the three first, A, B, C button, then the two, you always have to put the fraction in first, then you change it to negative by hitting that plus minus button. Then you just say times two, you should get negative three. So if you're, if you're like not practicing with a calculator, I'm not going to tell you how to use calculators on a quiz. That's why you practice. So that is now my equation. That is slope intercept. I'm sorry. That is point slope form. They gave us a point. They gave us the slope. That's why it's called point slope form. You can't. Yeah, that's just. It's just like when we did that y equals mx plus b formula, we would have y equals 2x plus 1. We don't get rid of the y and the x when we're, when we're writing it as an equation. Now, if you were trying to solve something, then you would maybe plug numbers in. But if you're just writing the equation of a line, the equation of a line always has a y and an x. Because the equation is, is supposed to say, this is all the possible solutions. That's what the equation is, just like that's what a line is. The equation is all the possible solutions. So this is just representing any possible X and Y value. So you leave the X in, you leave the Y in. Now there's a way to then convert that to slope intercept form, which I don't know that we'll even get to, 
but that's one of the things they want you to be able to do. You'd have to solve for Y, so you would just add seven to both sides, and then you would get Y slope intercept point. If you get Y all by itself, that is slope intercept point. Um, so now you need to graph this. So the way you would graph it is you would take the point that they give you. So is anybody writing anything? Writes it all. So I'm doing, oh, I'm still doing the one in the book. So negative two comma seven, negative three halves is the slope. So I put negative two comma seven on the graph. Oh, they didn't even give you the graph. Hate it when they do that. Um, so we would need to probably make our X and Y up here. I'll give you graph paper if you want to use graph paper. Oh, it's already been hectic. Oh. My smart board wasn't working. I finally got it working. I had to restart everything. So negative two comma seven. Oh shoot. Scratch that. Please be down here. There, that should work. So that's my y, that's my x-axis. Negative two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's my point. So that's the first thing I do is just put the point on the graph. Kind of like when we put the y-intercept on the graph, only the y-intercept is on the y-axis. Now I use the slope. So again, that's negative three over two, rise over run. So my run is two, so I go one, two. Your, your bottom number, if you always keep it positive, you'll always go right, so it makes it pretty consistent. You just have to then figure out, do you go up or down? Well, if it's negative, I go down. So there's your second point, and you draw a line through it. If you really wanted to, you could keep following that pattern to make a straight line. There you go. So not the only calculations really are again when you have to do the distributive property. You got to do that. And then when you solve for the slope, when you do four through seven, you'll have to use this formula. First, then you get the slope, then it's just like one through three. But first you're going to have to do this to figure out that's the slope. So you do that X1, Y1 thing, X2, Y2. You do not have to graph those on four through seven. You're just going to figure out the equation. So that should be enough to keep you busy for most of the class. Some of you might finish kind of early if you really put some effort into it. Be easy to walk around and help. Yeah. Okay. I'm not, and I'm not going to do another lesson on this. Now the smart board word, I won't add anything. There was going to be more today, but that, that's all I'm doing today. Today's practice. Um, so, you know, maybe you write the equation. All right, so again, the only piece you have to do to calculate for the first three is for the distributive property part. Let's go over there and show you. Oh, if you would rather have graph paper that has the X and the Y on it, although I don't know if this will. Yeah, I should be all there. I'll hand you graph paper if you want to try to draw your own X and Y axis like I did up there. That's fine. Here, Jocelyn, why don't you take one? Uh, you can pass this to those ones. Yeah. Yeah. Go by Josh. Yeah. 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 Now remember the point. There's no B in. All right. I won't place it on this one. Should be fine. That's the line. Oh, good. So now you got to multiply this all the way through. This changes the positive. 
So you can't do that on the calculator because it's a variable x. So that's the one that you got to know the rules. So this changes to x plus six. Then you got to say negative one times x, negative times one. Then what's the difference? Then that'll give you the final equation. Like, oh, I think I erased it. Shoot. Um, Tell me what, write this down on your, your example, page 118. I erased it. I mean, you should have written it down when I did it, but uh, the, form, the, the example that we, we finished the example on page 118, so I'll put it back up there. Oh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and put it. So that was the first step. Seven was the Y1. Negative three halves was the slope. X subtract negative two, which remember we said that changes to X plus positive two. I'm not going to write that in two separate steps, so you need to write a note of why that changed. Subtracting a negative is the keep change flip. It changes this to positive or to plus. It changes that or it flips that to positive. That's how I got to that. Now I do the distributive property. It's going to kind of go down to here. This is still just y subtract 7. I can't do any math there, but I can multiply this times both of those two numbers. So this times that, this times that. So negative 3 as x subtract three is what we got negative three halves times two is negative three so we say subtract three so write that down it's kind of a it's on the blank the bottom the last blank line on that example at the top of page 118. so your final answer won't have the parentheses in it anymore because you got rid of them by doing this distributive property it should look just like that. Why? I mean, either could be plus a number. If this would have been negative seven, it would have been plus. So it's not always subtract. Um, and then equals the slope times x. And then after you've done the distributive property, this last number should be different than whatever you started with for the x value. The x1 value. And I'm I mean, again, we got a lot of time. We got people helping so we can walk around and help you so if you're struggling don't worry we can that is an easy way to get you through it so, uh who didn't get graph paper that'll save you on one through three it'll save you from having to home girl today's a good day to practice you get plenty of help that'll save you time to create the graphs You got a graph paper that link. You got a question? Oh, yeah, you can't. This this is yeah, that piece of home to get the yeah, yeah. I can take home for that. Maybe it's going to happen. Well, you can't. You can't do that. Anymore. You know, you can do the negative one time the six calculator, but you can't put an X in the calculator. Negative one times X is just negative X. You'll never see it's one. one. So, I think that's so that yeah, it's it's well, it's not time anymore. You did the time when you did that. So you've already done the multiplication. This is just surprising. Right? Like what you did here, let's I'm gonna tell you what it looks like. Here's what you're doing. In this step right here, you're saying. Negative one times x. And you're saying negative six. Now I'm going to write positive six. Because the one is negative. 
positive six. Yeah. It's still not So the multiplication is taken care of when you get these two answers. The value just bring them back over. Yes, okay. Dude, slow man. I got plenty of time to help you today. You don't get it today. I'm not gonna. Maybe a bell work problem or something. Oh, big day. This would be y plus three. The slope was negative one. Be careful, positive one. We're not going to see negative ones. This is not going to see x plus six. Draw longer, man. So it'd be better to show this all still. I'm One, I'll bring you an eraser if you can erase this. And all this, at least for the first problem. I'm trying to erase it. One, all the way. Well, he took it. Because if you take shortcuts when you come back and try to use it later, you might not remember how you got to that point. Yep. Um, in a minute, let me finish up with. Are these the work on? So go ahead and erase. Well, actually, yeah, so. copy it. They're not very clear, so you don't have to be very Copy it exactly yeah. like it is. It's all correct. It's start with three like Oh, that's it. 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 Exactly. Line page two eight Yeah, it wouldn't be wise. Yes, it's the one that's the formula is five to subtract. So I subtract and then whatever number is the y. Careful, something else is that. All right, let's see. Where are the first three? Let's go into those. This is the skip slope. No, it's not. Yeah, don't go straight to these. These you have to do this. You got to figure out the slope from that, which is that formula there. And then again, it's it's. <laughs> Is it somebody? So is this for you to have? So it's an extra one. Something 
because sometimes kids will just leave this instead of yeah. they'll just leave it by after the day. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Yeah, so that's the four minutes. That is slope. So you need to write that down correctly. Be careful because you wrote it down wrong a second ago. So very carefully write what it says. Like we also write the book page. Um, oh, should that's really much. Oh, 